So I was born in Hamilton, 1957, June 1957, near Hamilton train station, which is about one kilometre away from the store. Then I went to the Sacred Heart Primary School in Hamilton, which is about 500 metres away from the store, just down the road in Hunter Street. Then I went to high school with Morris Brothers Hamilton in the 70s. Uh, yeah, so. So you, you pretty much grew up within a, a close area of the store. So what are your childhood memories of the store? Well, the store, when, so I started, what was year seven, 1969. So we started going down there after school and on the weekends and in school holidays. And that was when it was thriving. So it was just like, a really, it just basically had everything in it, and uh, mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, just had an awesome record shop in it. So I've still got vinyl that I bought there as a kid. Mm -hmm. You'd save up as you went there because it was like going to the mall in all those LA movies. So it was like it's like you could go there and hang out for like hours and hours mm -hmm. and just run around and. Uh, so they had a great record shop, but they had food, and that was where they had Levi jeans. So like 1970, that was a big deal. Because mm -hmm. no, we were all poor, so none of us could afford Levi jeans. Mm -hmm. So that's where the guys worked out they could go and steal them. <laughs> so that became the thing. So you'd see guys that turn up in the Christmas holidays with a new pair of Levi's. Okay. So we'd get them. <laughs> they'd go to the store. By nefarious means. Yep. <laughs> So you had to wear your long school pants in there, and then you had to get you had to get uh, you know get a whole bunch of pants and go in and try them all on, and then you'd leave one under. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and then, would they check for those kinds of things? Well, they tried to, but the place was so busy and so big, like it was huge that mm -hmm. place, and it was full of mm -hmm. people, like packed. Okay. So it was you know basically chaos, and the kids running around everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some mum. Footage uh, like an interview that was recorded in the store in 1981, and the background noise is unbelievable that, that's going on in the place. So, it had lifts and escalators, and you know, multiple, multiple floors, and it had that huge car park beside it. Mm -hmm. And there was multiple walkways, so you could walk from the store into the car park. Mm -hmm. So, you mentioned that you'd go there in your school holidays and you would spend hours on in there. So, run us through a typical day at the store, you know, you'd arrive. What time in the morning you'd hit the record store? What other kinds of things would yeah. you do there? Well, that's when that? record stores actually had, you know, people knew what, there was actually music in them and people knew what they were selling and people would say, I've got the new, I've got Robin Trow. Robin Trow is a very famous English guitarist. He was in Procol Harum for a while and then he went on his own. So that might have been a bit later, maybe 72, 73, but, yeah, that's, I bought his first record and then I've still got it. But people, you could go in there and the guy would play it on a big stereo. Mm -hmm. and you could stand there and listen to the record. So it was very service oriented oh, rather than. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah. People would say, I've got this, have you heard that? You go, no, and the guys would play it. They didn't care so much, you were kids. There was lots of people buying everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, in those days, if someone bought a record, it was a really big deal. And then everyone went around that guy's house for, and listened to that record a hundred times. Mm -hmm. So it was nothing like today. Yeah. Someone would say, oh, what's his name? He's got the new Led Zeppelin record and we'd be all over his place on the weekend, listen to it like 20 times in a row. Okay. So it was really good. It was great. Mm -hmm. And there's another good, the other, the store was down that end, you know, and mm -hmm. then there was, Tyrrell's was right up the other end of town. That was the other really good record shop. Okay. Which is near, right up near um, the mall. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the store had a great record shop. Okay. Plus it had food, lollies, the whole bit, you know, yep. it was like, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, and do you have any earlier childhood remember memories? Do you remember going there for the store Christmas windows or with your mum or anything when you were younger? I remember, well? yeah, after church, because we went to that Sacred Heart Church just down the road, and I remember, you know, getting going up there when I was a little kid looking in the windows. Yeah, that was a big deal. So people would, you know, people, you know, my parents would, you know, push the little kids. I've got younger sisters, but they'd be pushing them in a stroller and stuff, and they'd be walking up and down there after mass. Yeah, yeah, checking out the yeah, yeah. the different windows and, yep. and all that kind of stuff. You probably wouldn't necessarily remember any of the staff that worked there or anything. Do you, is there any staff that, you know, you've got any stories about or anything? Or? No, no. 
It's got chased a few times. One Christmas holidays, we were in the car park and the guys worked out they could let the fire extinguishers on. So, you know, it's Christmas holidays, like six weeks, and none, none of us went on holidays, so there was no going on holidays. Mm. So you just ran rampant for six weeks trying to avoid the cops and whatever else was going on. But the guys worked out they could get on the roof and let off the fire extinguishers, which we thought was very exciting. And then we'd, you'd have to let it off and then you'd be getting chased and you have to hit it. Sounds like you guys might have been the bane of the store's existence. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. It, more like, uh, you know, just petty crime. Mm. More like just idiots. But yeah, the guys, I mean, the guys in the, in the record store were great. Mm-hmm. But people were, they, everyone was a bit different then, you know. So people that people in those shops tended to knew what they were talking about. And, yeah. You know, they they weren't like they actually. You know, if you went in a record shop in those days, people knew what who you were talking about. Mm-hmm. So the store was like that. And they also had a lot of good clothes. I think a lot of you know, I think people that had money, more money, you know, you go in there and buy something good. Yeah. Yes, a lot of people have commented on the quality of everything that yeah, you buy. Yeah, it's diff- just a different thing. Mm. Not so much junk, you know, and the food was better. Mm. You know, you could go in there. I know my mum used to go in there and, you know, what do they call it? You know, afternoon tea, scones uh, and yep. jam and all that. Like, it's a big deal. But it was, in the like, Allower Hall, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look at the store building, it was up the left-hand end and there was this sort of separate entrance. Mm-hmm. It went up. And then I've, I've I believe there's... that's where they might have had bands at the end, which is what I was thinking about. But because Wins was this other sort of shop, like the store, which was beside David Jones, one block down, mm-hmm. and that was a bit the same, but not as cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think the store meant to the community in general at that time during the 1960s and 70s? Oh, it was a really good place. Like that's like I can remember my. Parents talking, my mum talking about it, especially going out. Yeah, it's a really good, you know, she saved up some money. She'd be off to the store to buy a dress for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and what would you say, other than the odd pair of jeans, was the uh, best thing about visiting the store? Record shop. Yeah, okay. Mine or help yeah. So, but yeah, it's like the store building. I mean, they should never let them pull it down. That's a disgrace. Yeah. You go to a European city, they would never let them pull a building like that down. No. Just not, they wouldn't let them touch it. They'd make, they'd make them fix it up or they'd counsel us the government and fix it up and turn it into something oh, like I could understand because that was one of those really ugly open, you know, the car park out was the concrete slab thing when it was open. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I could understand getting rid of that and maybe doing something, but that actual building, that's... Yeah, that's, that's a tragedy, that thing. Mm. I always thought it was really cool. Yeah. High ceilings, you know. It was, but it was, I mean, at the end, when it was that, you know, it was a dump where they had shoes and junk and all that stuff. I mean, it was just wrecked. But even then, you could still see the detail of the building. Mm. The ceilings, you know, was, they had beautiful ceilings. And mm. all those buildings had high ceilings with really big windows. It was yeah. almost like a New York thing. Mm-hmm. Almost like a loft or sort of thing. Any ideas on what you think would be the lasting legacy of the store in Newcastle? Well, I think when they pulled the building down, they destroyed that. That's what they should never have done that. That's, yeah. what, that's what the problem is, you know, it should have been there so that mm. it just stays there. And they, look, that was a great looking building too. Um, so, you just lose, every time they tear a building like that down, you just lose all that history. Mm. Whereas if that store building had been done up, that's this class. That's a classy building. It's like um, walking down the street in New York. Mm. It's just everywhere. Yeah, I did. I thought it was a. Uh, I thought when those places closed, it was terrible. Yeah, I, I, those places have had a lot. The store had a lot more character than Qatar Fair or Charlestown. There's something about those places, and I think in, the, in a place like this store, you'd go in there and you'd see you'd be talking to the same people for years. Mm. Whereas some of these other places, you you know, you go in there and you you know, you just never see the same person mm. twice. And that's right. Yeah, it was a different idea about quality mm. or service. I suppose those two things going together, you know. So yeah. not so much just getting rid of as much junk as cheaply as possible. Mm. Yeah, which and is... I think to the store and places like that, if you bought something and then you took it back, 
there wasn't a big problem. Like, and like if it was, you know, if you bought something and then it didn't fit, or, you know, you go back and you could get it changed, there wasn't a big hassle mm. about, you know. And yeah. Basically, you bought it, get lost. Mm. Yeah. Whereas you just don't get that if you go to a new building like Guitar Fair or mm. Charlestown, you know, it's just, it hasn't got the same vibe, hasn't got the same feeling, there's no sense of community, it's just, you know, yeah, it's not the same. Uh, I like that old thing about it. 